Hello there, everybody. So, Buddy Night Tiger Gamer, and welcome back to the House in Feta Morgana. Now then, well, last episode was something that I honestly just needed. However, with a title like A Bright Future, it is truly misleading. There was an unspeakable tragedy that must have happened, and I'm pretty sure in this recording we might finally be able to see what it was. So, let's do this. Morning. No. Afternoon. Master! Uh. Good morning! G good morning. Oh, come on, put a little more oomph into it. Same Giselle as always. <laughs> I must say, last night was something, Master. I didn't know you had that in you. <laughs> Just thinking about it. Ow! Hey, that hurt! What was that for? I was struck with an insatiable urge to whack you. Whatever happened to your heartfelt desire to do whatever you can for me? I don't think hitting me counts. You're tough enough to get over a little bonk. <laughs> you were being so nice yesterday. Where did that go? So, would you like to explain why you're making dirty jokes first thing in the morning? Uh, yeah, just... I was trying to lighten the mood to hide my embarrassment. Fair enough. Alright, could you not joke about that in the future? I didn't actually do anything to you. N no you you didn't. Sorry. Say, uh, could I ask you something? Yes. You hardly ever use my name. It makes us feel so distant. Could you do something about that, maybe? B babe? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. No, 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 no. That is not you at all. Just go with my name, please. We've graduated from a master-servant relationship to a romantic relationship, but that is a bit much. A romantic relationship? Exactly. So, uh, in honor of the new us, let's make this last. Uh, all right, Michelle? Uh, all right. Cute. Where's the despair, damn it? At the time, the light that had entered our life seemed unreal and fantastical. But I prayed that it would indeed last. In hope of an equally bright future, I allowed myself to rejoice in the moment, letting the unconquered shadows that looked in my peripheral remain unseen. Hmm. Oh. Blackness consumes the once colorful space. Giselle still stands before me, as she did within the door. But I struggle to reconcile the two scenes. They are both real. They are both her. The lively, spunky girl of the past and the lifeless girl of the present are both Giselle. As different as they seem, they are both her. Why don't... We stop there. It was a wonderful story. They overcame their troubles and lived happily ever after. Is that not good enough? It could not be worse than where we are now. All we have to do then is erase the now. Throw everything away and start over from where it was better. You were able to bear them because they weren't your tragedies. And that goes for more than just me. Actually, as a matter of fact, those words apply even better to her than me. The ending is already set in stone. It's already happened. What point is there in watching it again? All that accomplishes is making me relive it all. The ending has not been written. We are both here now, which means our end still lies ahead of us. Then, can I ask you? To promise not to let go of my hand, no matter what. 
No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Now I understand. That was a request. Even if she didn't perceive it as such. In place of a verbal response, I squeeze her hand in mine. I know where this tale is heading. Toward tragedy. All the other doors we visited ended in tragedy, and ours is no exception. But perhaps what's waiting at the end of this one is even more dire than I imagine. The door to our past swings open once more. Behind which lies the end of me, and the beginning of her. Oh boy. Well, here we go. A month had passed since the night with the Rose. Right on schedule, the monthly delivery arrived, but in it was a letter that would dramatically change our lives. My father, Antonin, had fallen ill and died. I presumed it was the witch's doing, but she was silent, refusing to respond to my questions. If it wasn't her, then he must have died naturally. It seemed more than a little tasteless to celebrate someone's death, but good taste and reality do not always agree. I was extremely relieved to hear the news. So am I. The man had raped Giselle. He had tried to have me killed. And now he was gone from this world. I had been waiting for this moment for years. His passing had another effect as well. My death could be revoked. Many years ago, my brother had told me that when he succeeded our father, he would welcome me back to the Bollinger estate, and I could be part of the family once more. Which meant this letter signaled the end of my banishment. Um... Not sure how to feel about it. Yeah, rejoicing doesn't seem really appropriate. But this means you can return home now, right? In theory. My brother is set to take control of the estate, so he should be accommodating. I'm going to write a letter. Have them send us a carriage. It is much too long a distance to walk. All right. I'm excited. What should we do first when we get to the back to the capital? Oh, I know. How about you stop by my place? My mom and sister won't believe their eyes. Hmm. My time in this mansion was almost at its end. The future I'd only vaguely envisioned was now within my reach. I'd always spoken of this moment pre predicted, predicated, with eventually, like it was some kind of unobtainable fantasy. But now that it was practically a reality, I realized I hadn't actually given it much thought. Hey, are you still awake? I am. Not a great night for sleeping, huh? Are you thinking about your family? It all seems so... surreal. Yeah, it does. This house is like a desert, desert island, cut off from the world, which makes everything feel kind of like a fairy tale sometimes. Even what we have. From time to time I get the feeling that nothing is real. That the outside world is just a figment of my imagination. That my entire life only ever existed within these walls. Are you nervous? Maybe I am. I always thought that when this day arrived, it would be more... cathartic. I'm sorry. I'm finally able to take you back to the capital, and it, I can't seem to get past my own negativity. It's so unnatural to be nervous. I am too. I haven't spent nearly as long as you living in this mansion. But I know how you feel, because I feel the same way. Not knowing what the future holds, it's scary. You know, I was thinking I would be okay with staying. I mean, I would love to return to the capital, and, and I miss my family dearly. But even if I never got to see them again, in no way would I ever consider myself unhappy. I honestly think I've got a pretty wonderful life. If you're not comfortable going back to that house, and you're just saying you'll endure it for me, Giselle, there are other paths we can take. You can live with your family, 
or we could remain here in the mansion. Not at all, no, I want to. No matter where I go, you'll be there with me, Michelle. It's true. I am nervous not knowing what the future holds, but not in a scared something bad might happen kind of way. It's more of a jittery, excited anxiousness. I'm confident the two of us can overcome anything, no matter what obstacles may come our way. Together, we can create an even more wonderful future. Don't worry, Michelle. The future is nothing to be afraid of. You make it sound like I'm paralyzed with fear. <laughs> but you are, aren't you? Hey now, don't give me that look! Once again, she's the one pushing me forward. I will make sure you have a good, happy life. Thank you. <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. I'm feeling kind of sentimental. Think about how we've only got a little time left here. It wasn't perfect, but it was an important part of my life. Indeed. I say. Yes? Um, I, uh, well, I think I could handle it right now. Probably. Handle what? It? Oh, use your head, you little... I don't follow. Ugh, how can you be so dense? I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of dense here, but I think I get the gist of it. I mean, you know, to touching and so forth. You know, uh, take the next step. I'm saying I'm feeling up for that right now. Oh my. Uh, it's not proper for a woman to bring up that subject, is it? But, but, but I did kind of ask you to wait, and I feel bad leading you on for so long. Um, yeah, I I'm sorry. N You're shaking. I'm, I'm just really emotional, that's all. You don't need to force yourself if you're not ready. I can wait as long as you need. There you go! That's the best word you could say. Especially with the conviction there. Besides. Besides? N never mind. It's fine. There's no need to rush things. You don't need to worry. Yeah. Ah. I wrote two letters. One to my brother, and one to my mother. One so, so Giselle could return, and one so I could be myself. To demonstrate who I was, I had to prove that I was not cursed. For failing to do that would not only bring her grief, it might become the final crack in the identity I had built up for myself. I had to convince her that I was neither demon nor angel, but a human man who had fallen in love with a human woman. However, I was too foolish to realize that the future I envisioned was nothing but a fantasy. Had I been able to grasp that, then maybe I could have taken her somewhere far away, where no one knew who we were, where things might have not turned out differently. Okay. Bring it on. Bring me the despair. I'm waiting for it. Bring the tragedy. I'm not ready for it, but bring it. It's been really foggy out lately. I'd rather if we left when it was clear. It'd be terrible if the coachman rolled the carriage because he couldn't see where we were going. If there wasn't so much fog, I would probably have been able to see little columns of orange evening sunlight fighting their way through the trees. But the milky white mist seemed to swallow up all the light, leaving nothing for the surrounding area. It was rather dreary weather. I wonder when they'll be here. Although, if they never do show up, that's okay too. I was finally able to return to the capital with Michelle, to see my family again. And that was wonderful. It was like a dream come true. But it wouldn't disappoint me if that didn't end up happening. I didn't care where I ended up, as long as Michelle was there with me. That's all that matters. I should probably close the windows. The coach isn't likely to show up at night, I don't think. Hmm? I reached my hands out to shut a window, which is when I saw something wavering beyond the heavy mist. Light? And it wasn't just the one. Looking closer revealed several more flickering spots. They moved up and down, slowly but rhythmically. As more and more came into view, my mind began seeing them as people carrying torches. 
They're coming this way? Could they be our escorts back to the capital? Though... As soon as the thought, sure, there are a lot, popped into my head, something whizzed past my cheek. What? Huh? What was... Huh? Why? What? It was an arrow. Giselle! What the... The arrow had flown through the window and pierced the opposite wall. Had Michelle not knocked me out of the way... Giselle. Giselle, are you okay? I I'm fine. But what... Why did... What's going on? <sighs> Never mind that. Right now we need to run. Huh? Wait, Michelle! Now! There's no time to talk! Stay out of sight of the windows. You got it! He grabbed my hand and broke into a run. A relentless storm of arrows showered through the windows we had worked so hard to get open a year ago. This wasn't what we had gone through all that effort for. <clears throat> Once I open the front door, run! We have to get as far from this house as quickly as we can! What was happening? Why did we have to run? Why were those people firing arrows at us? With the wave of questions came a wave of fear. I couldn't say anything. The sheer terror had frozen my jaw in place. Get ready! I nodded, squeezing his hand tight. I knew it would just be another obstacle to his safe escape, but I didn't want to let go of his hand. I was afraid that if I did, I would never be able to hold it again. Are you alright? I'm fine. But how? There are people out front too. <sighs> Damn it. Why? Several arrows were sticking out of the floor before us. Beyond the door, which Michelle had managed to shut almost immediately, rang a cacophony of whoosh, thump, whoosh, thump. We were... We... We can't escape? Why? What's going on? Damn it! With a deep scowl, Michelle barred the door, and all the while the arrows kept flying. The panic in the air kept growing thicker. D I don't understand. How did they. Only a handful of people, people even know about this pl. The village. Uh, th this is all my fault. It's because I told the villagers about this place. They think a demon lives here, not a human. So they're here to tear down the house. They made weapons, bows just for this? I don't. <laughs> ah! There was a deep rumble and the ground below us shook. I almost fell to the floor. They're trying to break down the door, it seems. Michelle, I... I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. Because of what I did. No. What? It's not your fault. It's mine. Michelle? I challenged her. And because I did, she made my curse real. What are you talking about, Michelle? <clears throat> this way! Run! Oh, boy. Michelle dragged me through the mansion's corridors until we reached the chamber with a stained glass window. At the far end of the room sat a small door. Well, where did it lead? I'd be un I had been unaware of the door's presence, but I had never gone inside it. I had been aware, sorry. Something about it seemed somewhat different than the rest of the house. I wasn't sure how to describe it exactly, but it felt like shadows had taken root here. The observation tower. A tower? But if we go up there, we're putting ourselves in a corner. It doesn't matter where we go, they have us trapped. But there's a chance that up here, he didn't finish that thought, however. He opened the door, leading me into the tower. His face deathly pale. <laughs> we started running again, around and around the spiral staircase, making our way, to, uh, to our way toward the top. In regular intervals along the wall were rectangular windows. A layer of fog still lay thick across the land. Peering out into it made me feel like we had been thrown into a dream world. 
if it weren't for the orange spots of torchlight surrounding the mansion. The silhouettes holding the torches. Is that armor? Appeared to be knights. Michelle, tell me. Why do you think this is your fault? What is your curse? <laughs> your curse? It isn't just the color of your hair and eyes, is it? There's more to it, isn't there? There's something else, isn't there? <laughs> Michelle's gaze was firmly directed forward as he frantically led me up the stairs. We were breathing hard and the sound of it echoed across the stone wall, tower stone walls. Our panicked hearts were beating so hard. I was afraid they might be able to hear it outside. Eventually we made it to the top. A pile of discarded rope lay unceremoniously at the front of a door, presumably once used to seal it shut. The door itself was deeply withered and rotting in places. It had obviously been left sitting in disrepair even longer than Michel had lived here. Well, what is this? INSIDE! <laughs> Frigid air nipped at my skin, and it wasn't a pleasant, refreshing kind of cool, but a bitter, oppressive cold. This room felt like unlike any other in the mansion. This is an observation tower. You can't even... There once would have been windows allowing you to see in all directions around the mansion. But all that remains now is that tiny opening near the ceiling. If we hide out here, then there's a chance they might not find us. <laughs> it sounds like they broke down the door. Don't worry. They won't find us. And when they give up their search... We can get out of here. I I'm sure it'll turn out all right. Michelle's voice was quivering, as was his hand and mine. Michelle. We huddled together, feeling each other's warmth in our arms. My free hand clutched his shirt for dear life. I'm sorry. What? I'm... I'm to blame for this. It's my fault you're in this mess. The pain you had to experience. You're being sent to this place. And what's happening now can all be traced back to my being born. I'm so, so sorry. Why was he apologizing? Why did he insist this was his fault? Why couldn't he tell me what his curse was? Why were people trying to kill us? Right. Right. Those people were trying to kill us. Putting it into words like that made the fear that much more real. The arrows they fired weren't threats. They meant to kill us. Michelle? But with Michelle trembling in my arms, I couldn't bring myself to ask those questions. What meaning would those answers even have with the death lurking so close behind us? All I could do was pray. Pray that he was right and that they wouldn't find us and we would be able to escape. However... Over here! There's a door! And stairs leading up! <laughs> My hopes were shattered by the sound of voices from below. I could hear a faint clacking of armor. Our grips on each other tightened, and our trembling intensified. Fear swelled within the tower, making us its slaves. Giselle. We were both terrified. And who wouldn't be? Fairy tale heroes could be magically courageous in the face of overwhelming danger, but they weren't real. The fear of my impending death, drawing nearer and nearer with each passing moment, almost drove me to madness. I couldn't think clearly. My heart was having trouble keeping up. My head was a big white mess. We were supposed to return to the capital, start a new life, finally obtain our happiness. It was right there at our fingertips. Enough happiness to make up for Michelle's ten years of isolation. Enough to erase that nightmare from my memory forever. What have we done to have that taken away from us? We just loved each other and wanted a quiet life together. Nothing outrageous. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die! But what scared me the most was being separated from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. What are those people really doing here? They... If what they're after is money or valuables, we can offer them everything in the mansion. We don't need any of it. If they don't want us to return to the capital, we can tell them we'll stay here. They might be willing to talk it over. I don't care if I lose everything else. As long as I have you, I can survive anywhere. All that mattered was that we had our lives. So as long as the two of us still breathed, but... DEATH! DEATH TO THE UNHOLY ONE! 
death to the heretic. Death to the witch. <laughs> Despair hung over us like the fog outside. There, w there were no heretics, no witches, no unholy ones here. But they would probably never listen to us. The moment we stepped outside of this room, we would be dead no matter what we said. M Michelle? I... I... I I'm... I'm alright. It's okay, Michelle. I... I'm not scared. It, you're here with me after all. I'm fine. It's all fine. So please hold me until it's all over. Please stay with me. Finally, you speak. M Michelle? He wasn't looking at me, though. His unfocused eyes were directed upward. Not toward any particular point, but wandering aimlessly. His purplish lips appeared to move as though he was speaking, but no sound came out. Hey, hey Michelle, are you alright? Come back to me, Michelle! I grabbed him by the shoulders and shook, but he didn't even seem to notice. No matter how many times I called him, he didn't look down from the emptiness above. M michelle Giselle. Finally, after far too long, his gaze slid down to meet mine. He looked defeated, exhausted and cornered all at once. I was scared too, but his fear seemed to have consumed him entirely. Please hear me out, Giselle. I never thought anything good would become of my life. I never thought I would find anyone who truly understood me would be happy to have my love. And for that, I hated the world. I was in constant torment, living in the shadows. But then, a single ray of light shone down upon on me. Michelle. You, Giselle. You delivered me from the darkness. I'm scared, Giselle. I'm terrified. I used to think my life was meaningless. That it didn't matter if I lived or died. But now, I can't stop shaking. That's perfectly normal! I'm scared to death too, but... But what scares me most is losing you. Th Michelle. I should have noticed. Noticed his arms were tensing up. Noticed. And stopped him. So please, allow me to repay you. I said I would do anything for you. So let me do this. I haven't given you anything. I haven't done anything for you. So give me one final chance. M Michelle! What? What are you doing? Get back in here, Michelle! What? Why? The door? I can't open it! I shoved on the door, trying to go after him but it wouldn't budge even the slightest bit. It was as though there had never been a door there at all, merely a wall disguised as one. It wasn't someone holding it shut from the other side either. And I pulled with all my might. I pushed and pulled, oh sorry. I pushed and I pulled with all my might, but I couldn't even manage to eke out the tiniest crack. Michelle, Michelle, what did you do to the door? C come on, get back in here. I, I don't want to lose you either. Say something, Michelle, you're out there, aren't you? Please, please don't do anything rash. They're going to kill you if you're out there. Giselle, the witch told me. What? That she would ensure your safety. M Michelle, she, she isn't real. There is no witch talking to you. It's all in your head. A figment of your imagination created to alleviate your loneliness. Rest assured. She does not lie. Michelle! Please, listen. You are a wonderful woman, Giselle. Spirited. True to yourself. Deeply sympathetic. You are not to blame for how difficult your life has been. Most of the fault lies with me and a bit of bad fortune. But that's all behind you now. Once this is over, you can start anew. What are you talking about? So, survive. Live a good, fulfilling life. Move past this. Live your life, and always love your family. 
I know you can do it. That is my wish for you. Oh, I, I don't, I don't want that. I want to be with, uh, God, this is tearing me up, fuck. No one else, but, I don't, uh, I don't want to let you die. There it is. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Get back in here, Michelle. I'll open the door. If my choice is to live on without you, I'd rather... Your scars will heal. You'll find a nice man and have a wonderful family. Why? Thank you, Giselle. For bringing light to my world. Don't say that! What if... If there is a next life, I hope you don't mind if I pray that we're able to meet again. That we find each other once more. In another world. Michelle. Dish. Michelle. It is our holy duty as knights of the church to deliver punishment under the heathen who made a pact with the devil. C come on, Michelle, open the door! You are sentenced to death. Your body to be hanged upon the cross for three days and three nights, wherein your unholy flesh shall be purified by the fires of heaven. Why? What are you doing here? Open the door, Michelle, please! Listen to me, you can hear me out there, can't you? You shall now be executed. Do you have any final words? Who? Who is it you're sentencing to death? Michelle Bollinger? Or... A demon child, naturally. Or a witch, perhaps. But please, open the door! Why won't you open it? He isn't unholy or impure. He's a perfectly normal human. And a very sweet man. I'm... Yes, I'm the witch. The witch is in here. I'm the one you want to execute. Kill me. Execute me. Now I see, Giselle. This world. Kill him! So many blades pierced my flesh. A sword in my chest. Lances in my arms and shoulders. Arrows in both of my legs. I could hardly even tell what hurt anymore. There was an unpleasant hiss sound in the tower. Almost like a heavy rain. It was the sound of my blood spilling onto the stone. Red. It was red. Just like anyone else's blood. It didn't flow in un into unnatural patterns. It didn't turn into black demonic shadows. It didn't cause anyone who touched it harm. It was just ordinary. Red blood. Regardless, this body was probably still cursed. It... It had to be. I couldn't hear Giselle's voice anymore. I hoped she was safe. And alive. I prayed that at least she would be protected. That the witch... would keep her promise. It was getting dark. Light... was quickly departing from my world. Darkness everlasting dragged me down into its pits. I believed in you. Michelle? Michelle, hey, say something. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on? What's going on here? No, this can't be happening. An impossibly heavy thud came from beyond the door, and with it, Michelle fell silent. Then intermediate squelching sounds as something slid down the door. No, no, no. Oh, this can't be. Why? Why? I 
pounded on the door with all my strength, but still it refused to give. The skin on my hands eventually going raw and beginning to seep blood. Why? Why should Michelle have to- have to be killed? Tell me why! Take me with you! Please don't leave me behind! That man isn't a witch! He isn't cursed! I'm cursed, not him! So don't hang him! Don't humiliate him like that! Kill me instead! Please! Again and again and again I pounded on the door. Also my throat's tearing up right from this. But the self-described knights on the other side seemed to not even be aware of my presence. They seemed unable to hear my cries. Their armor clanking with each step, they began to descend the staircase, and with it I could hear the sound of something being dragged slowly across the floor. No, don't take him away! Stop! Don't take Michelle away from me! I'm begging you! But my pleas were in vain. My hope was for naught. The knights took him away. Took him somewhere out of my reach. For all eternity. God, this is... Don't take him away from me! Ugh. There was the tragedy. Michelle? After much, much too long, the door swung open all on its own. It happened so unceremoniously, it was hard to believe I had actually been trapped inside. I had no idea how much time had passed, but the chill in the air suggested it was deep into the night. And with the biting cold, there was the stench of blood. Why? Why? Michelle, I, I never wanted this. Uh, I can't even do the screams, honestly. I can't. You didn't understand at all, Michelle. You didn't show the depth of my feelings for you. You didn't know how intensely I wanted you, how fervently I loved you. I was never going to be able to find someone else and live happily with them. It had to be you. The thought of anyone else touching me was terrified me. You just didn't understand. I don't want... I don't want to live in this stupid world. The time I spent with you truly was the happiest time of my life. I remember. I remember everything now. You died on that day. You were killed. You disappeared from this world and left me behind. That's right. I remember. I remember the pain. The agony of death. And the fear. I did indeed die that day. You refused to listen to me. Do you have any idea how it felt to feel you dying from the other side of that door? Giselle, I wanted you to take me with you. Is this what you wanted, so wanted to see? My memories. The traces of my life on this earth end there. In order to find your truth, we need more of the story. Very well, then. If you want more story, I will tell you more. What comes next is both a continuation and a brand new tale. The Maid's Tale. When you've heard it all, I expect you to commend me for not forgetting how to smile. We haven't completely cut through the darkness yet. An arctic wind blows past me. At the same time, I'm gripped with an overwhelming urge to break down into tears. Perhaps this is the solitude she felt for so long. I have to face this. I have a responsibility to her to do so. And I have to atone for being such a misguided fool all those many years ago, convinced that I was doing what was best.
Achievement unlocked. The Moonlight Spell. All right. The sixth door. 1099 to unknown. All right. This is my tale and the maid's tale. A tale of a foolish, naive girl. Looking back on it now, I'm ashamed of everything. Oh, wait, I guess it's the girl? Wait, um, wait, what? But I will tell you my story, in its entirety, without embellishments. I ask, oh. I ask that you please not let go of my hand. The only things the knight left behind were a garment and a large pool of your blood. Oh, sorry. Blood had seeped into the fabric and it was beginning to dry. When I clenched it in my hand, it made soft crackling noise sounds. The oppressive stench of death lingered in the tower. Michelle, there's no point in life without you. You know that, right? Have a wonderful family? You know I can't do that. Hey, Michelle, answer me. Come back to me. I don't care if it's as a ghost. I just need you here with me. Come back to me. Talk to me about nothing and about everything. Be irritated with me when I do something stupid. Scoff at me whenever I tell a bad joke. Trounce me at chess again. Put your arms around me one more time. Come on. I'm begging you. If you won't come back to me, then I'll go to you. I don't care if that's not what you wanted from me. This world without you is meaningless. Whoa! Dying won't guarantee you get to see him again. <laughs> this tune... He spends all his time refusing to talk to me. And when he finally does, he begs me to save his love. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Rather disappointing, to be honest. Who are you? Where are you? <laughs> Quite daft, aren't you? Within these walls, I am everywhere. And you've heard of me before. No. <laughs> Heavens, you are slow. Is that pretty head of yours only for decoration? What? what but, but no, there's no one else. You might be thicker than these walls, my dear. Although, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You never did believe anything Michel said about me. You thought he was going mad? <laughs> this is brilliant! No, there's no way. It, it can't be. The cursed witch, Morgana? Okay, I guess I should probably give a more fitting female voice. No, fuck it, I'm gonna keep going demonic, I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, you didn't even know my name, do you? It would appear my legend has survived longer than I expected. I suppose I should thank all the humans who passed it down for me. You... Actually exist? I most certainly do, my dear. As I recall, you don't believe in the supernatural, do you? But it's hard to deny that when that very witch is talking to you right this moment. Michel was not even slightly mad, my dear. I told him he was better off without his sanity, but he refused to listen. He wasn't deranged. His surroundings were his environment, the people around him, his whole world. Can you imagine how dreadful this that must have been? To be the only sane resident in a world gone utterly mad. It's a miracle he managed to keep his head. Remember what you said just before he died, my dear? You said it was all in his head. You said he couldn't tell the difference between illusion and reality. 
You said he had long since gone insane. Shouted it at the top of your lungs. No, that's not what I meant. Ah, poor, poor Michel. If only you had believed him about the witch. I feel bad for you too, though. You have my pity. What did you ever do to deserve this? Oh, and just to be perfectly clear, I played no part in either your or Michelle's misfortune. The only force to blame for that is fate. You were a good, honest, joyful, lovable woman. And look at how the world treated you. <laughs> May I ask you something? Was it you who sealed me in the tower? Yes, it was. That was what Michel wanted. Once, I told him I would grant his wish. So I did as he asked. Though, it looks like that ended up causing you even more pain. How tragic. So, you're planning to die? Are you hoping to reunite with him in heaven? That plan's destined to fail from the outset, my dear. God teaches that suicide is a sin, and you'll go to hell for it. Then... I will not kill you. Why not? Because I swore to Michelle that I would save your life. <laughs> poor, poor Giselle. If you have any other wish, I'll be happy to grant it. I can't bear to see you so miserable. The wish. You have but a single desire right now. To see him once more. Isn't that right, Giselle? Are you saying you can make that happen? You'll bring him back to life for me? The forces of life and death are outside of my realm. That is God's territory. All the angels. However, I can guarantee you this. His reincarnation. No. His reconstruction. His... Reconstruction? Yes. You can meet him again. Not in this life, but in some future life. Just imagine it. Finding your beloved again after overcoming so much tragedy. Ten, twenty, maybe a hundred years, years from now, you're finally reunited. Doesn't that sound marvelous? True, unparalleled love in its purest form. What do you think? Just because you can bring his soul back doesn't make it Michelle. I want to be with him. That brusque, impenetrable, slightly immature, but gentle as a butterfly man. The one who sincerely, deeply loved me. If it's the same soul in a different body, can you still call him my Michelle? <laughs> <laughs> You beat me to the punchline, and you did so with such ardour you threw me off balance. You're exactly right. The idea that if your love is strong enough, you can both be reborn and have exactly the same relationship is utter fairy tale nonsense. You must be the same people to have the same love. Which is why I'm not promising his rebirth or reincarnation, but his reconstruction. Your wish can become reality, Giselle, as long as you wish for it with all your heart can come true. I'll wish for his reconstruction as well. You have a witch asking to make this happen, my dear, so you can be confident that it will bear fruit. And you wish for him to remain as himself? If he truly loves you, and he too wishes to reunite with you, your wish shall be granted. Will you really wish with me? I most certainly will, my poor, pitiful, dear Giselle. I shall offer up my most heartfelt prayers for you. I... I'll wish for it. Until the moment of my death, I'll keep wishing for us to be reunited as the same people. I can't guarantee your reconstruction, though. What? I only said I guaranteed his. Michelle's is the only reconstruction I will wish for. I will not ask for yours. But why not? You're not looking at a benevolent wish-granting goddess or an angel with a magic bow and arrow. You're looking at a cursed witch. Then how am I to be with him again? 
I can offer you but one option that will allow you to re reunite with your reconstructed Michelle. Tell me! What do I have to do? You must live. Here. With me. Live? With you? What do you mean? It was Michelle who, who resurrected me, but he could not serve as my guide. I have work to do, but I cannot do it alone. I need a guide to assist me. Because as you can see, I have no body. If this house did not exist in this world, then perhaps I might be able to give myself form. My soul's form. I don't understand anything you're saying. You don't need to understand. All I need from you is for you to show your utmost hospitality to the people I'm expecting to show up at this mansion someday. Entertain your guests? That's right, my dear. Michelle isn't the only one whose reconstruction I'm wishing for. There are others. Several heinous sinners! So, I want you to serve as a maid and watch over them when they arrive. And until then, keep the house in good condition. Well, what? What are you scheming? Is, is that something you truly need to know, my dear? All you need to do is wish. Pray for the day your beloved appears before you again. For the day he wraps his arms around you once more. One word, Giselle. That's all I require. Do you want to see him again? Do you want to hear his voice again? I can promise you you'll have your happiness. I can promise you you'll have your happiness back. What reason is there to hesitate? There isn't one. Or are you simply going to give up? <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you said no. If you disappear from this world, how will Miss Sheldon react when he comes back? Will he be sad, angry, or will he forget about you and fall into the arms of another woman? No, he can't. Then make up your mind. Will you come with me, or will you throw it all away? If I had given it a little thought, I would have realized she was manipulating me. That she was just telling me what I wanted to hear. But I believed her. I accepted her proposition. As unbelievable as it sounded, my desire for it to be real overpowered everything. It was impossible not to grasp at the straw she was dangling in front of me. That was all I could do at the time. The witch's voice also had an inexplicable power to it. It made me believe, as outrageous as it was, that she really could bring you back reconstruct you. Maybe because I had seen her turn in a door into an immovable wall. Or maybe because I had heard her disembodied voice. But I don't think those are enough to explain it. My guess is... She had me under her spell. That was the moment I became the maid. But I assure you, I was, at that point, still the same Giselle you knew and loved. The sound of the rain never seemed to stop. Am I hallucinating it, maybe? From the moment I lent my ear to the witch's sweet temptations, the mansion underwent an unimaginable transformation. No light shone through the windows, despite them still being unobstructed. Not morning, day, or evening. In fact, the concept of morning, day, and evening did not seem to exist. The darkness resembled that of when the windows had all been sealed off, but there was something more fundamentally unreal about it. Like, it was hovering over a vast, all-consuming abyss within a constant haze of malice. I felt like I had been cast into some unknown realm, and that was why there was nothing beyond the windows. And the house was not the only thing that underwent changes. I, too, was no exception. In the blink of an eye, all my basic human urges vanished. I stopped feeling hungry, and I no longer needed sleep. Naturally, I was bewildered by what was happening to me, what I was turning into. I think I'll take a look around. Maybe there have been other changes. I think I just broke my neck, sorry. So I meandered through the mansion's halls. 
My original intent was to explore the entire house, but I found myself drawn toward one room in particular. That's right, your bedchamber. There was no light, not a trace of color remaining in your chambers, but the bed was the same shape, the walls the same texture, the curtains the same designs as when you had been alive. Michelle, I'm praying, I'm always praying, that someday we'll meet again. Oh, there's something hidden under the bed? What could it be? It's that painting. I never did get to ask why he got so angry about me seeing this. I'm sure it's something he didn't want to be reminded of, perhaps having to do with his family. I was right in not pressing him about it. The Jeez, Giselle. What are you doing tripping over yourself? It was just that accursed witch messing with your head. No need to get spooked over a tasteless prank. <laughs> when I stumbled, I guess I knocked a drawer open. There's something inside. Letters, it looks like? I shouldn't touch these. They're not mine. But... I want something of Michel's to have. Something to remember him by. His letters would be in his handwriting. They would contain his words. Please forgive me, Michelle. I don't mean you any ill will, but I'm going to take these. I must say, there are an impressive number of- <laughs> What the- What on earth? It's like someone dumped an inkwell on every page. But why? Was this the witch's doing too? Yeah, it has to be. It must have been her. It definitely wasn't you, Michelle, was it? Front door. I wonder what it's like outside. I can't get it open. What's going on? The bar isn't set, but it won't budge an inch. It's just like up in the tower. I know. The windows. They should open, and then I can. What's going on here? What the heck is going on? It's like there's an invisible wall in front of the window. My hand won't go any further. <laughs> this is rich. What else can I do but laugh? What in the world? This is madness. Get... Hurry up, Michelle. Return to me. Get me out of here. Please get me out of here. <clears throat> I had no idea how to explain anything that could happen to the ma ugh, that had happened to the mansion, but it was clear enough that I was imprisoned within its walls. I was all alone in a nebulous sphere of bleak darkness, and beyond its walls lay void. The layout of the house remained unchanged, but I felt as though I had wandered into a twisting labyrinth. I could cry, but there was no one there to smooth soothe me. All it did was provoke her disembodied cackling. Oh god, I just heard it. God, that was freaky. Which she followed with. You chose this, my dear. So you need to hold yourself together and keep wishing. My only real pastime was cleaning. I dusted the same corners again and again, swept the same floors, polished the same dishes. One day I decided I would read the books left in the library. Despite there being more than a hundred volumes, I finished every one of them in what felt like no time at all. My life was a never-ending cycle. Day in and day out, day in and day out. The house had no visitors. No one. Rather, nothing at all set foot upon the property. There were no signs of other life whatsoever there. No birds singing in the morning. No cats sunbathing in the garden. 
No mice scurrying about the kitchen. No creepy crawly insects. There was nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that broke the long stretches of silence was her voice. Tell me, was she kind to you? Was she friendly and courteous? Because she was quite harsh when she spoke to me. These were the kinds of things she was always saying to me. He didn't show up today, did he, my dear? Are you still praying, my dear? Do you think he'll actually come, my dear? I'm still wishing, just like I promised, my dear. You know why he hasn't come for you, my dear? Because perhaps he doesn't actually love you as much as you thought. My dear. My dear. My dear. Have you lost your mind yet? Shut up! I've had enough. I'm done with you. <laughs> enough. Please, enough already. Oh, what's got you so worked up? You love to talk, don't you? So why not have a nice little chat with me? This is not a chat. Maybe not in your mind, my dear. You think to seem. You seem to think chatting only constitutes conversations you enjoy. But I don't think the world's usage needs to be so restricted personally. You're just getting off on watching me squirm. Oh, not at all. You'll have all my best wishes if he ever does show up for you. <laughs> Ooh, so scary. If you're making that face when he shows up, <laughs> he might not even recognize you. What? You haven't looked in a mirror recently, have you? Go on then, my dear. She just how frightful you've become. No. The witch was right. I looked nightmarish. My face was pale and lifeless, my eyes hollow and my cheeks sunken, heavy bags under beneath my eyes. My hair had lost its sheen and it grew wildly. I was quickly losing everything that made me recognizable as me, and the thoughts sent a shiver down my spine. N no, this, this isn't me. This is some kind of trick. You're trying to deceive me. Baseless accusations. You really must stop blaming people every time something doesn't turn out the way you want, my dear. But... My face was more... More... What? More expressive? More cheerful? Brighter? Rosier? You're right. You were never this gloomy, were you? Right. I wasn't... I was always more cheerful than this. Naive girl, could you be any more narcissistic? Huh? What you're looking at is undeniably exactly what you look like now. Time did not do that to you, nor did I. The negative energy oozing from within you is what's causing you to take on this form. Did you think you didn't have any dark, ugly emotions inside you? Did you believe you would always be able to smile no matter what? Did you assume... You are pure and beautiful. No one like that exists, my dear. What you see in the mirror is the true you. Your hideous, twisted heart. If you... If you weren't always being so nasty, this would have never happened. Anyone's heart would be twisted listening to you long enough. So you're saying Michelle's heart was twisted too? I spoke to him for years. N no! I'm just teasing. I suppose I may have crossed the line there. I mean you no know ill will, Giselle. Honest. Allow me to give you one word of advice, though. Look at yourself in the mirror more often. If you continue deteriorating at this rate and end up looking like a corpse, when Michelle comes and sees you, he won't jump for joy, but run away screaming in terror. Stop talking. Please, just stop. You know, Giselle, this is only the very beginning. He might not show up for hundreds of years. I, 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 I can't live that long. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. You still think you're alive? What? The moment you agreed to come with me, you ceased to be of this world. So don't worry about time, my dear. You can wait as long as it takes. As long as it takes for him to arrive. <laughs> I 
As the witch had suggested, I started checking my appearance in the mirror every day. I wanted to ensure I didn't turn into some horrifying creature. My hair grew, so time seemed to be passing, but I didn't appear to age at all. The flow of time had apparently perplexingly vague and had become perplexingly vague and uncertain. Was it stopped or was it moving? I couldn't tell. On occasion, I would practice smiling in front of the mirror. My smile was, after all, my only really distinctive feature, and I was certain you had seen me smiling more than anything. Even if my appearance had changed drastically, I thought, you would still be able to recognize me by my smile. A woman standing alone in front of a mirror practicing how to smile. I'm sure that was quite the comical sight. And that was about how my days went for an incomprehensible long time. 10.99 Whoa! Twelve hundred. Wait a minute. Okay, that's actually, actually, I kind of need to end it there. Believe it or not. The Maid's Tale. <sighs> okay. Okay, so now... We're seeing everything through Giselle's perspective now. Seeing what she had to put up with all this time. <sighs> Which means we might be able to see how things played out through her eyes with the three sets. You know, the flakes and haired family, Yukimasa, and Jacobo. This time we'll be able to see everything through her perspective. See things as they are. And what actually happened. I freaking love this novel. I... I love it. It's... It is really freaking good. Like... I'm just blown away by how good this is. Also, I realized I really need to drink water because my throat is dry as fuck. Okay. Finally regaining all of the memories and seeing what actually happened. Well. I'm upset that I'm going to have to wait a week, but I guess I can go ahead and say this right now before I forget. The reason why the videos this week have been kind of, I guess, short is kind of, well, workplace, basically, kind of, you know, everyday life kind of taking away time from me. Well, this time, this week has just been killing me. I'm, I'm not even halfway through it right at this point, and, well, let me put it, let me put it to you this way. I want to record two hours. I want to. Time-wise, I actually can't, which pisses me off. Without going too, into too many details, because I'm pretty sure you guys don't even want to hear about it. You're probably just getting, you probably already clicked off the video, or you probably are just getting annoyed by me rambling. Let's just say, you know, life job, day job just kind of eats away a large amount of my time. But the good news is, next week, I will have much well, much more time, which by much more time, it's more like an extra two, I mean, an extra hour to an hour, to two hours maybe. So I might be able to pull off like the super long videos like I used to. Maybe, maybe next week, I don't know. But if you guys like this, be sure to let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching and I freaking love this novel and I'll see you guys in the next video.